We failed. I failed. The Blades are sworn to protect the Emperor. Now he and all his heirs are dead. The amulet. Where's the amulet of kings? It wasn't on the Emperor's body. He gave it to me. Strange. He saw something in you. Trusted you. They say it's the dragon blood that flows through the veins of every septum. They see more than lesser men. The amulet of kings is a sacred symbol of the Empire. Most people think of the red dragon crown, but that's just jewelry. The amulet has power. Only a true heir of the blood can wear it, they say. He must have given it to you for a reason. Did he say why? He asked me to take it to a man named Joffrey. Joffrey? He said that? Why? Well, it would seem that not all of his heirs are dead. Nothing I ever heard about, but Joffrey would be the one to know. He's the Grand Master of my order. Although you may not think so to meet him, he lives quietly as a monk at Wainan Priory, near the city of Coral. I've heard of it. How do I get there from here? First, you need to get out of here. Through that door must be the entrance to the sewers, past the locked gate. That's where we were heading. It's a secret way out of the Imperial City. Or it was supposed to be secret. Here, you'll need this key for the last door into the sewers. The sewers? There are rats and goblins down there. But from what I've seen of you, I'm guessing you're an experienced acrobat. Am I right? <laughs> no, you are not. Alright, it's time to build our class. It's usually to your advantage to design a custom class. That's true of both Oblivion XP and the vanilla game. Intelligence, willpower, and magic will ensure that we have a casting character. And of course, the skills associated with those statistics will raise more quickly. Now this is by no means, you know, a model build that I'm going with here. It's really one that just suits my personal playstyle. If you want to find an optimal build, it's pretty easy to find those on the web. Illusion, Destruction, Restoration, those are probably the three most important skills. I decided to go with Light Armor in the end. You can get eh, about 50 armor rating at least end game out of a good set of Light Armor, and it doesn't encumber you at all by the time you get up to 100. Of course, your spells are slightly less effective. You get a 5% casting penalty for wearing any form of armor, but for a permanent 50 armor bonus, that's kind of hard to turn down and it's a complete game changer. So I think it's worth it and I'm gonna go with it. Athletics I've picked for similar reasons. It's an important skill and so the bonus that Oblivion XP gives us to raising that skill is gonna be important. So alteration I've taken um, just because I really like the open lock spell. I don't really want to fool around with lock picking a lot during this playthrough but it's not a very good spell school, at least not by default. And um, so, besides Destruction, Illusion, Light Armor, Restoration, Alteration, um, and Athletics, the seventh skill is really up to you. It's uh, sort of a toss-up between Conjuration and Alchemy for me. This time around, I'm going to be choosing to go with Conjuration in the end, just because there's some really neat spells that Midas has got that I'd like to show off to you, like Conjuring a Magic Carpet and all kinds of other cool summons. Um, they are also actually quite useful in combat, but I don't really want to rely on conjurations too much. They tend to slow things down. So here's the final product for you to review. Looks good, so let's commit. Really? I would never have guessed. Still, I don't think you'll have any trouble with rats and goblins. You're a sarcastic son of a bitch, aren't you? Alright, what's next? You must get the amulet to Joffrey. Take no chances, but proceed to Wayne in Priory immediately. Got it? Yes, I understand. Good. The Emperor's trust was well placed. What about you? What will you do? I'll stay here to guard the Emperor's body and make sure no one follows you. You better get moving. May Talos guide you. By the way, thanks for recovering Captain Renault's sword. I'll see that it is given a place of honor in the Halls of the Blades. Uh, it must be some kind of ceremonial thing, so we have to give up our very useful sword. But no worries, we'll be able to find one of equivalent quality soon. And it's not like we're a sword-oriented character anyways, right?
Let's see what we can find out here before we leave. Bowers and I are the only ones left alive, it looks like. I hope there are no more assassins. How many of them have we killed? A dozen? At least. Ah, uh, hello. Open you up. Potions? Nice. Ah, uh, this must lead to the sewers that Bowers was talking about. I don't see that we have much of a choice. Goblins and rats, huh? Well, I think I've got the solution for that. Let's just be sure to proceed carefully and check out all the corners. There might be goodies hidden in them after all. I still have sewers like this running all over the Imperial City, if I recall. So I'm not quite sure where we are. Ah. Let's hope these rats aren't any harder and meaner than the ones we've seen before. <laughs> I can see that they're not. One fireball takes care of them very quickly. Someone's keeping cheese and flour down here. I'll take that. Oops. Yuck. I gotta admit, that was a pretty nice shot. Let's see if we can hit that guy from here. Goblin Berserker, huh? Not a fellow you want up close and personal. Let's see what he was carrying. Another leather shield. It's up to three points of armor this time. That's because we tagged light armor. So our skill is 25, and I think it used to be 5. Oh yes, I did remember to loot him. Alright. Onwards and upwards. There. Can't open that. Okay, up the stairs. And I think I can see the way out there in the distance. Let's just make sure we haven't missed any loot. Nothing to loot here. So, away we go. And here we are. We're free. Welcome to the beautiful world of Cyrodiil. You can really see the difference that some of the mods make here up close and personal. All you have to do is search for just about any other Oblivion playthrough on YouTube. And you can see the difference that it makes. It's high resolution textures and enhanced vegetation. It's just absolutely beautiful. And now of course we can go anywhere we want. We can do anything we want. So where to go first? That's our decision. Okay, I've decided to fast travel to Shaden Hall to begin with the Mage's Guild quest line. Let's see if he can help us find the Mage's Guild. We're here to help. Hi, I need some directions. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the guilds. The guilds are west of the river, south of the west gate. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Aesthetically, Shaden Hall is probably my favorite town. Of course, made even more beautiful by the Better Cities mod. How are you? This has that fairy tale aspect to it. Hello. It reminds me a little bit of the Fable series. There's nothing particularly overwhelming about it. It doesn't have that grandiose cathedral-like quality to it, but it's just very well sculpted and has lots of nature. It reminds me a lot of those sort of Japanese gardens where you can't quite tell where nature ends and the town begins. Hello there. 
Not a bad place to read a book. Let's proceed to the guild. Well There's the fighter's guild. We'll be going there at some point. This, I believe, is new and comes with the mod. And there, there's the mage's guild. This will be a big help to us. And so our journey begins. Ah, Falcar, just the man we need. Did you want something? You're not here to join the mage's guild, are you? <laughs> As it happens, I am. Are you sure you're up to it? You seem a little slow. <laughs> yes, I want to join. I expect this will end in disaster. But nonetheless, I will grant your request. Very well. You are now an associate of the Mages Guild. To advance in the Guild, you'll need recommendations from each local Guild Hall in Cyrodiil. A feat which I'm sure will elude you completely. If you manage to actually receive the recommendations, you'll be eligible for entrance to the Arcane University. I shall be quite surprised as well. Now, Unless you wish to attempt to impress me with your no doubt staggering intellect, I have actual work to attend to. <laughs> the Severus Snape was an elf. Anyways, I require your recommendation. Don't waste my time if you're not ready for this. Are you prepared to do what is necessary to gain a recommendation from me? I am. Let's continue. Hmm. Very well. We shall see how prepared you actually are. There was a particular ring of burden I was testing some time ago. Another stupid associate somehow got his hands on it and managed to misplace it. If I didn't know better, I'd say he purposely tossed it down the well behind the guild hall. Why he would do such a thing is beyond me. You will retrieve this ring for me. Should you manage to do so, I shall consider sending a recommendation to the university. The well is locked. So you'll need the key. Dietzen should have a copy of it. Now get moving. It seems like there's more to this story. It's not a normal ring, you see. You may find it slightly difficult to carry. Don't say I didn't warn you. Is there anything else you can tell me about this task? I believe I explained your task very clearly. Find the ring, which is somewhere down in the well behind the guild hall. Bring it to me. Do you understand, or do I need to use even smaller words? <sighs> what a bore. You too. Alright. So we need to find Dietzen, pure and simple. I wonder where she might be. Ah, uh, hello. I'm Alanui. I'm only a conjurer, but Orentur is a full magician. Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> well, I can tell he makes you happy. Can you tell me anything about my task? It sure sounds like Falcar has it in for you. What a bizarre thing to ask you to do. You're telling me. Certainly. Yes, her disposition is always... Wow, it's already at 94, which is close to maximum. We're not going to be able to get it up any higher than that. Have a look at my wares. I'm sure there's something to suit you. I think I'm more interested in selling right now. Be seeing you. Of course, you can also sell all of the materials that are right in front of her, back to her. And with alchemy, this works quite well. <laughs> so I think that's what I will do for now. I'll leave what she's got behind How the counter you? for now. So the plan right now is we need to make money. Money is freedom and oblivion, just like it is in the real world. So I'll be searching around the mages' guild, which is all free for us to lose since we're a guild member. Hello again, Falcar. Not someone I was hoping to run into down here. All of these books give us experience for reading them, but for right now, I'm really only interested in taking what's of value. Nothing in there either. I have an idea. Let's take a look at the Mages Guild Charter since we're now a member. That might have something useful for us. Let's see. Imperial Charter of the Guild of Mages. Purpose. The Guild of Mages provides benefits to scholars of magic and established laws regarding the proper use of magic. The Guild is dedicated to the collection, preservation, blah 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 blah. <laughs> yes, not much in here that's terribly useful. 
Basically, if you commit a crime, you'll be suspended, and then you have to go talk to the Council of Mages to get back in. What qualifies as a crime is anything else that would qualify as a crime anywhere else in Cyrodiil, so theft being the main one. Archmage Traven, he's the head of the guild. Uh, really the only useful part is that part at the end there. It tells you what each city, what school of magic they specialize in. So we're in Shaden Hall, and that's the school associated with Alteration. So we'll find our open lock spells here if we ever need them. actually throw spells at that. I don't think it ever gives you any skill, though. Nothing of value. Ah, potions. Those are always useful. Of course, we can sleep down here if we feel we need to. Although at night, all the beds will be occupied, so it actually is better to sleep during the day. Sweet rolls. Those will combine to make us potions, so we want those. And that's Falcar's rooms, so we can't get in there now. Let's head back up. Good afternoon. This is a wondrous encounter. Welcome. What's new with you? Mm, these are valuable as well. Been abolished in Morrowind. House Dress and Hlalu have renounced the slave trade and freed the beast folk from servitude. Okay, we need to drop a few things so that we can go downstairs and sell the result. Alembics have the least amount of value to weight ratio, so we'll just drop a few of those. And a calcinator. And then we'll be able to sell. It seems that these are turbulent times in the land of the Dunmer. Ah, Dietzen, that's the woman we well. need. I'm Dietzan, magician, mages guild, that is. I need your help. We can talk, so long as Falkar is out of earshot. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he's trying to get you killed. Really? He gave poor Vidkin the same task, and we never saw him again. I'm reasonably sure there's a connection, but I can't prove it. Do be careful. I'd hate to lose another useful associate. Here's the key. And something extra. I don't know if it will be of use to you, but from what I've heard of Falkar's ring, it may come in handy. And if you find out anything about what happened to Vidkun, let me know, will you? Why am I not surprised? Are there any other details you can tell me? Just perform... No, they're not. Can you tell me about Vidkun? He was an associate, just like yourself. Perhaps not the brightest, but very eager. He was given his assignment from Falkar and disappeared. It's like he dropped out of existence. No one knows what happened, and Falkar won't say a word about it. That is suspicious. Well, thank you, Ditson. I will be careful. You too. Hi there. Okay. Time to complete some business. It's my pleasure. Okay, so this is about the only around. merchant exchange I'm actually going to leave in the video without cutting it, just because I want to show you how to haggle. Basically, it starts by picking an arbitrary value based on their disposition and their skill with mercantile. The better skilled at mercantile they are, the less money you can make. And then you just adjust the slider until they can't sell to you anymore. And it'll remember where you were from last time. Remembering to use the haggle bar is a bit tricky for some people. It can be very easy to forget. But as you can see here, we're close to the selling value. So we're making sure that we're getting the maximum profit right now, and we're selling a bunch of things at once. And that's generally the way to go. Now, the Living Economy mod does take care of a lot of the problems of setting haggle every time, which is, again, a bit of a pain in the butt. <laughs> but it also brings in a lot of added complexity, too, which you may want, like regional prices and so forth, and fluctuating gold throughout the day that the merchant will have available. I didn't really want to deal with that in this playthrough. A good price. And so this is basically what you do. And most of these potions I won't need because I didn't decide to have the astronauts sign. So my magic regenerates. It seems a fair price. 
Now is perhaps a good time to mention that, actually. Um, the Atronaut sign is a favorite for um, power gaming mages. It gives you 50 more magicka than the sign that I currently have, um, and 50% spell absorption, which is quite nice, but at the cost of not allowing your magicka to regenerate naturally. And if you've ever seen somebody play with that spell, it's, you know, it's not bad, but it basically governs the entire playthrough for you. The whole game is now centered around regenerating your magicka. It governs where you go first, it governs when you go. It's just, it's something you have to worry about all the time. So, I'm not going to bother with it on this playthrough. Now, we can sell off these as well, but I'm actually going to skip ahead, since who really wants to see a bunch of buying and selling, right? Ah, oh, now this might be interesting. The Grey Fox Manor Myth. I won't read the whole pamphlet to you, the gist is basically that there's some debate as to whether or not a thieves' guild actually exists and whether or not it's led by a mysterious man calling himself the Grey Fox, which is supposed to be supposed to be several hundred years old and impossible to catch. And that will come into play for us later when we join the thieves' guild. But for now, it's just something to ponder. Yet another thing that I should mention about the Oblivion XP mod is that it gives you a reason to sleep, and it makes sleeping slightly more realistic. Basically, it has rested XP, similar to World of Warcraft. In fact, I'm sure the inspiration for it came from there. And basically, you sleep for eight hours, and you earn the maximum amount of rested experience that your character can hold. And then as long as you have rested XP, you will earn double experience. So it gives you a reason to rest that doesn't really exist in the core game, and I like that. It does also, unfortunately, waste a little bit of time. But, since we're done looting around the guild, I think it's time to go to sleep. And there we are. And as you can see, we've earned 408 points of rested XP, which is our maximum right now. So, let's get started on our very first quest for the Mage's Guild. We just have to go outside. Oh, it's night now, since we've been sleeping for 8 hours. And this spell, Buoyancy, is the one that Dietzen gave to us. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough for us to be able to both carry the ring that we find, but water breathing might come in handy, so I'm going to load that spell for now. Okay. She said that the well was behind the guild, if I remember correctly, so that should be somewhere around here. Yes, I think that's it. And in we go. Okay, so now we have water breathing, so we're safe under here for now. Oh, what's this? A Nern root. Hmm, an unusual plant of value that we should take to an alchemist. And there's poor Vidkin. I had a feeling that would turn out to be the case. So we've taken his ring of burden. But we can't move with it anymore. So actually, I'm just going to drop the ring for now, because it's really quite useless. We found out what happened, and now it's time to report back. So we're going to just go ahead and drop that ring. We, it turns out we really don't need it. Okay, I think it's time to leave. Now, it can be a little tricky in Oblivion finding a collision point with ladders that you can actually click on to leave. There we go. Well, I think it's time to report what we've learned, don't you? So, let's swing around here, head back in, and see what we find. Where's Dietzen? I'm afraid some things have happened while you've been gone, Associate. It may affect your recommendation. Really? How so? I'll admit, it's my doing. I couldn't leave well enough alone, and after you'd left to go after that ring, well... I'm just so tired of the way we've all been treated by Falkar. I was worried about you and angry about Vidkun, so I confronted Falkar directly. He was furious when I told him I'd helped you, and then when I threatened to report him to the Council of Mages, I thought he was going to kill me. He flew into a rage. I didn't even understand some of his ranting, but he said that our days are numbered, and then he stormed out. I don't know if he ever wrote your recommendation. I'm sorry. I didn't expect this to happen. Perhaps you should go look and see if he did write one. You should check his room in the living quarters. 
If you see the note or anything else unusual, let me know. I'll gladly send it to the council. <laughs> I wonder what the odds are that he actually wrote us a glowing recommendation. Goodbye. Let's set this to our active quest for now. That way we'll know where to go. So if I remember correctly, his office is down in the basement. So this door should be accessible now. And it is. Nothing in there. Ooh, plenty of useful scrolls and potions. I don't see a recommendation anywhere. <laughs> Paintbrush back there would indicate to me that he's a painter. Him and Hitler, right? Ah, Falcar's Black Soul Gem. Hmm, looks like someone was practicing necromancy against the wishes of the guild. Let's take these back to Tietza and see what she thinks. Also, Falcar's bed may be permanently unoccupied now. <laughs> That's good news for us. Hello. What's this? Black soul gems? Oh dear, this is worse than I'd expected. All right, I'll just take these from you. I'll need them for my report to the council. Now, you didn't find any sort of recommendation? Very well. I shall write one myself and include it in my report to the council. In light of the circumstances, I believe they'll find it more than adequate. Thank you, dude, son. I appreciate that. Good day. You know, I think things will be improving around here for the guild if it was being led by a necromancer, luring apprentices to their deaths in order to serve his own ends. Let's get a few more hours sleep just to maximize our rested experience. Of course, as you probably noticed, Oblivion XP also gives us experience for completing quests. And in this case, it was quite substantial. Here's a little trick in case you need to use a bed, but you don't want to move. <laughs> Just spam the use key while they're standing up. What? <laughs> Nothing. I just needed to sleep there. Looks like it's quite a popular spot. Okay. So, where to next, you might be thinking. Well, so am I. So am I. Hmm. Well, I think what I will do is I will continue with the Mage's Guild questline. It takes you through all the cities, and that way you'll get a good sort of preview of what the game is like. So let's go to Bravo. We'll move in a sort of clockwise fashion from town to town. Have pity on an old war veteran. Ah, hello. State your business. I need some directions. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the guilds. The Fighter's Guild is east, by the bridge to the castle. The Mage's Guild is south, by the bridge to the port. South. So that will mean the south side of town, not south relative to where we are now. So there are two bridges, and uh, there's the Fighter's Guild. So that's the wrong bridge. That leads to the castle. So we need to find the bridge to the port. Incidentally, welcome to Bravo. It's supposed to be known as the poorest city, but the Mage's Guild is actually quite nice, as we will see. 